So you got this fancy schmancy new audio interface that everyone's been raving about. You got it all hooked up. You got the software loaded up, but your apps aren't going to the right channels. Is your expensive new toy defective? Are all those streamers just wrong about the Go XLR? And is there any way to fix this? You'll be happy to know that the problem isn't with the Go XLR. The problem is the way that Windows prioritizes processes and there's an easy fix. Welcome and welcome back. I'm Wolverine Guy Kev, and today we're going to use a couple of software solutions to work around the way that Windows prioritizes the stock volume mixer, making it difficult to get audio sources to go where you'd like. Before we get too far in, though, if this video sounds remotely interesting, please kick like subscribe, comment down below, and uh, hit that bell so that you can be alerted every time I make a new video. The Go XLR and the Go XLR Mini, one of the top hardware purchases for anyone streaming on any platform, and with good reason. It provides a streamer-centered solution to audio mixing and using high-end XLR mics such as the Shure SM7B. The Go XLR comes loaded with software that helps with your audio sound, with all the plugins, the compression, the uh, the noise gate, the EQ, um, and it's a very easy to use, straightforward process. Did I just say process? As you can see, there's support for multiple profiles. Uh, you can assign the four faders that are physically on the device, and you'll see them represented up here in this diagram. And you can customize each button on the Go XLR, whether it's lighting, uh, uh, the amount of sound that comes out, and it will save to the profile. Uh, right here, you've got the volume mixer that's going to be the levels to get your sound balance, and this will sound the same in your ear as it does on the stream. You've got your cough bleep slash sensor button and your headphone volume right here. And if we go over to, and if we go over to the mic area, there's a setup to set your default gain on the mic, set up all the options on your noise gate, your graphic EQ, compression, and your de -esser. That's not what we're going to talk about today. What we're going to talk about is the routing table. This routing table, down, shown down at the bottom, is how you can decide what audio channels go where. The very top line is your headphones. So anything that's going into your mic, your chat, your music, your game, line in, which is the audio jack in the back, system sounds, or your samples, which is meant to be the pad on the bottom of a full Go XLR. This is not available on the Go XLR Mini. All go into the headphones so you can monitor. Now you see that I've got console unchecked. It's because I stream from a single PC. I don't have a, uh, a console hooked up or a capture card. Then you've got your broadcast stream mix. This is what your stream hears. And for this particular profile, which is my default regular stream just chatting profile, all they can hear is my mic, the chat, if I've got Discord hooked up, and game volume, just in case I turn on a game. And then at the very bottom, the chat mic is going to pick up, obviously, the mic, but also I have it pick up samples so that I can troll my Discord party with them. And then at the bottom, you have whatever your sampler can pick up, which obviously it cannot pick up itself, but if you have system sounds or game sounds or anything you want to record them to the sampler, you can do that. Now you can set any of these sounds to a profile, have it saved. So if I hit say my gaming uh, sound profile, it will have a different routing table set up, different volume levels, etc. cetera. And uh, coming soon, there's going to be sub mixes. That's not quite available yet. However, this seems pretty straightforward. Unfortunately, the way that Windows prioritizes processes, <laughs> The way that Windows prioritizes sound processes, it doesn't always work out that way. And this is especially evident in games such as Call of Duty Warzone, which happens to be my game of choice. And the problem becomes that the stock Windows volume mixer does not rank high enough in the system processes to change the default sound for some of these pro for some of these uh, apps, for some of these apps, for some of these apps. The problem is that the Windows volume mixer, the stock volume mixer, does not rank high enough in processes to control some of these games or uh, 
your Spotify or your iTunes or whatever. So what do you do? Fortunately, Microsoft store, the Microsoft store has a solution. If you go into the Microsoft Windows store, there is an app called Ear Trumpet, link down below. Um, and it ranks significantly higher in the, in the, uh, in the app hierarchy. The way Ear Trumpet works is a lot like your default Windows volume mixer. Now I've got this maximized so that I can show, so I can better show what the options are. Any, any app that is open that has the capability to play sound is going to be listed right here in the volume mixer for Ear Trumpet. And if something is playing in the wrong area, you simply right click it over here to the two arrows and you can change the device that it plays under. This works especially well for video games and uh, sometimes uh, one of them, Spotify, iTunes, doesn't like to play well with the volume mixer. If you change the device that an app is playing to, sometimes you need to restart that app in order for the settings to take effect. That's the easiest way to fix that particular problem. Now, another issue with the GoXLR software is that if you decide you want to use the Twitch VOD track and have your music say not go to your VOD recording, GoXLR doesn't really have a really uh, easy solution for that. So first let me explain the VOD track. When you go into the OBS settings, you can go right down to output and you'll see right here, you have all of these audio tracks, one through six, but then you also have Twitch VOD track. Now you click to enable it and assign one of these tracks to be the one that the VOD goes to. So if you decide that your music uh, does, you don't want your music to go to your track for whatever reason, if you record your streams for YouTube and you need to sync up different music, you make a lot of cuts, whatever, it's a really good uh, option to have. Then you would untick track two for your music so that it doesn't go to the Twitch VOD track. I think that made sense. So anything that goes to track two here goes to the VOD recording. So you want to make sure that everything you want saved goes to track two. If it's not going to track two, it won't go to your VOD. So if you go into your advanced audio sources where you just right click the volume mixer on OBS and bring this up, this is the screen you're gonna see and you're going to see every single, uh, every single source that you have that is capable of sound. Well, you're gonna see every single media source you have right here. You're going to be able to do in OBS volume adjustments. You're going to be able to check whether or not you want it to be mono. You can balance it to the left or right. You can do a sync offset in case that your speech is not quite matching up with the video. Audio monitoring, which is a whole other video. And then the tracks. Now you'll see that most of these one through six are all ticked because I want that audio going to every single track. I want it to go both to my live stream and the VOD. Live stream is going to be track one. VOD is track two. And then if you use the other audio tracks, that's on you. I don't do things that are that complex. Right here, music audio and system audio are unticked to go to the VOD. The reason that a lot of streamers use this is to avoid getting a DMCA strike or getting their VOD muted. Now, I'm going to do a full disclaimer here. Putting your music video uh, off of the VOD audio track uh, in, in order to avoid it getting recorded is 100% effective in preventing your VOD from being muted. However, it is not 100% effective in avoiding a DMCA strike. This is just playing the game, skirting around the rules. Will you have less of a chance of getting a DMCA strike if you do it this way? Yeah, you'll have less of a chance, but the lawyers know what you're doing. And at some point they're gonna get motivated and they're gonna go into the live streams like they do every couple years and issue a slew of DMCA takedowns, which can result in very large fines. So use this at your own risk. I mentioned that the GoXLR doesn't do this very easily, and it does not. When you are using the GoXLR, you're sending all of your audio 
out to something called the Broadcast Stream Mix. It is one audio source. So it is already pre-mixed coming out into one output. And you'll see right here, I don't have music in that stream mix, but it is going to my headphones. The reason for that is because my broadcast stream mix is going to go to my VOD. So in order to have my music not go to the VOD, I need to have it not a part of my broadcast stream mix and have it as a separate audio source inside OBS. So what I do, and please ignore the infinite loop of OBS windows here. So I have an asset scene here called audio sources inside that has uh, command sounds, my hype train music, my system audio, which does not go to OBS on the VOD uh, in the broadcast stream mix. It is a separate sound, so it does not go to the VOD and my music. The way I add that is I click add source and you can right click and click add, or you can click the little plus sign down below, go to audio output capture, and I've got a music audio already, but we're just gonna call it music so that you can see uh, you can see the whole process. Device is going to be music and hit okay. Now I have this. I go into, I'm gonna go down here to my volume mixer, gonna right click, go to advanced audio properties and music uh, right here. This is the new one. You can adjust the volume however you want. Uh, you can have it monitored, monitored, or not monitored. Now, because it's already going into your uh, into your headphones the way that I have it set up, I don't want it monitored. I don't want to hear it because then I'll just hear double. And you untick the Twitch VOD track, and that is all there is to it. Now, you're going to want to play with the volume of your music track in OBS to make sure that it's not crazy because you won't be able to hear it. The way that I did that was I just put a limiter that's a OBS filter that keeps it from going above a certain volume. So I can actually crank the volume. It isn't gonna make a darn bit of difference because it's never gonna go over a certain volume level. You can always look at the audio mixer to see how high the volume level is. Make sure you're not clipping on anything. If it's coming high enough to clip, they can't hear you talk, just FYI. And again, this is something that will keep your VODs from getting muted, but will not 100% protect you from a DMCA strike. So if you're using copyrighted music, don't. And that's going to do it for uh, for this video. Uh, again, uh, download Ear Trumpet if you're having problems routing your audio to the correct sources. And if you're gonna use the Twitch VOD track, make sure that you put in a separate audio capture source, an audio, audio output capture, for each one of those devices and don't have that device going to your broadcast stream mix in order to avoid any kind of doubling. If this video was helpful for you, please feel free again to like, subscribe, comment down below, hit that little bell to get notified for new videos. And if you have any comments, please, 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 please come to my Twitch stream every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 11 a.m. at twitch.tv slash WolverineGuyKev. I do a lot of just chatting. I talk about some of the things I do in the YouTube videos and uh, I'd love to hear from you. Plus, I got a pretty cool community. And if this video was helpful for you, uh, check this one out that YouTube is recommending for you. I'm sure it's awesome. Uh, until next time, y'all stay safe. Thanks for watching.